Hey everybody, Greg Pruitt here with Idaho Dispatch, and I'm sitting here today with Lieutenant Governor Janice McGinn. Thanks for taking a few minutes of your busy Absolutely. day. Absolutely. I appreciate what you do to try to let people know what's going on here at the Capitol, especially during these late days. Yeah. Things are moving fast. Yeah, we're, we're back in session mm -hmm. after the little break, which I think a lot of people enjoyed. I know I enjoyed <laughs> a little bit of a break in between, but... Um, so, yeah, I, I, we don't really know how much time's left. We're thinking maybe a couple of weeks that the legislature may be in, maybe two, maybe three weeks, maybe less. You know, it just kind of depends on how uh, everything moves through at the Capitol here, which is you know, totally chaos half the time at the end. But um, what, what do you think here in the, in the closing days? What are some of the important things that you're working on? Uh, what some of the important things that you think the legislature needs to work on as we get ready to close up the session here? Well, Greg, what I think is so fascinating that I see happening right now is this growing public awareness of what's happening in our schools, uh, starting in uh, K-12, even pre-K, and then for sure in our universities, this social justice agenda and the critical race theory that we're learning more and more about some of these things that have been in our higher, edu higher educational institutions for a for a few years, but maybe people haven't really been, have been, it hasn't been brought to the public awareness like it has just recently. I mean, the, we, we hosted a session in Capital Clarity one day, bringing this to light, and I know other organizations have been bringing this to light, and we're hearing that, in fact, th there was a poll that was put out there that showed that the high majority of people in Idaho are opposed to some of these things being taught to our kids. And what's been interesting as we've moved further into where we are now in the session, as more public awareness is being brought to this, there's, there's some things happening in the, in the State House. They, the other day, they, the House killed the higher education budget. That was the first thing that happened. Actually, that was the second thing that happened. The first thing that happened was they, the House killed a bill on a $6 million grant to, to you know, start up a pre-K program that, by an organization that was um, purported to be supporting some of these ideas. And then today, what happened on the House? They, they voted down the education budget in the classroom because they don't, they don't want to support, have money that supports those teachings. And we want to we wanna support our teachers, and that's where some of the false narrative is coming out. That That's why they're sending the bill back, and they're going to put intent language in there to protect the funding for our, our school teachers, but really focus on the curriculum that's happening in, in our schools. And because of a lot of this attention that has been brought forward, and and I'm hearing from people all across the state as I travel around the same thing. What is Idaho doing to protect our students okay. and our young people? So I last week put out a, an announcement that we're going to assemble a task force, and it'll. Uh, we're still putting the, some ideas together and how we're going to conduct that. And I'll be happy to talk to you when uh, further about that when we sure. get that put more together. But that, we're going to we're going to study that and we're going to go even more in depth in what's happening in, in our schools. Okay. Was there something uh, that kind of spurred you to go, you know, man, we need a task force to really take a look. Was there any particular story? Or yeah. Was it well, be, be, like I said, I was, I've been traveling around the state, listening to my constituents all over Idaho. And I would, specifically, I went home to Idaho Falls and had Easter brunch with my family and my mm -hmm. mother before I left to come back to Boise, my mother looked at me and she said, what, what is Idaho doing? What is our governor? Is he doing anything to stand up against this? And, and I thought about it. And I said, well, you know, we don't have to wait around for somebody else to take an action on that. I'm the lieutenant governor and I, I can start these initiatives. And that's kind of what prompted me. Because, again, I don't, okay. like to, I don't like to wait for somebody to dictate what we do or don't do in this office it's just taking initiative when when we see that there's you know a, something that we can do and take an, a, a leading role then then that's what I that's what I like doing okay and so I, I know with the critical race theory that's a discussion that's kind of happening all across the country as a lot of uh, other governors and 
and states are looking at legislation uh, discussing critical race theory is you know some of the comments and some of the criticisms that we've seen in the in the media and, and from some you know Democrats are that you know it's unfounded it's not happening here in Idaho you know there's no examples you can show us in Idaho that that, that that's happening is is that true or is there is some of that stuff happening right here in Idaho? Well, I can tell you that they it is happening because since we put our press relief release out there and we've started soliciting people from across the state their interest to serve on this, I mean, we're getting lots of information from people. Just the other day I spoke to a student at BSU who's in charge of some student organization there and she was talking about how her experience, how her voice, she feels like her voice is being silenced and they have these rules and guidelines and you, you know, you can't post this, you can't post that if it's political. And she she was told she had to take her comments down and she says, I, she told me she feels like she's being bullied. So we can't allow that to happen in our schools. People need to feel free to express themselves. That's what the first our First Amendment right is all about, the freedom and protection of free speech in our country. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anything else as you know we wrap up the session that you think is important and that? Well, it'll be interesting to, this afternoon as we go back onto the floor of the Senate. They're going to be amending a bill. It's House Bill three three thirty two, having to do with income tax, where okay. there's a proposal to reduce income tax rates, and there are six different opposing amendments to the bill so we'll okay. see what shakes out there but it, it obviously passed the house and now the senate wants to work with it a little bit so we'll see what happens there i think that's so far the only meaningful tax relief that i know of that's going to come out of the session and then the senate has to well the senate and the house have to agree on how they're going to deal with this almost eight billion dollars additional that is maybe working its way back to Idaho through the Biden recent stimulus plan. So okay. uh, they, they've got to come to agree, agreement on how they're going to deal with that, and then then they should be able to wrap up and go home. Okay. So overall, I mean, do you have an overall feeling about the session and how you think it's gone so far? Do you think the people of Idaho have you know, gotten a lot of the things that they have wanted, or is there a lot to, to go still? I've... I've been frustrated, to be honest with you, about the lack of progress on what I consider some of the real important bills having to do with the constitutional balance of power between the legislative and the executive branch of government. There were two bills that, that passed on the Senate floor last Friday, and we'll, people are waiting to see uh, what's going to happen with those when they get delivered to the gentleman on the second floor's desk. But um, so slow progress on that. The, there's still nothing on the, uh, the resolution for the legislature to call itself back into, into session during, during times of crisis. And, so, and then the protection of the individual and our citizens about our right to provide for our families and worship freely. It's just... They, they had a special session in August and made all these promises to the people of Idaho. And I don't know why by the 1st of January when they all came back, they couldn't have had language that they all agreed to and just put it through and have it go to the desk of the gentleman on the second floor and just have that be the, have been the very first thing they dealt with. And here we are, 12 weeks in and still waiting to see what happens on that. Yeah. The gentleman on the second floor is the governor, by the way, for <laughs> those unfamiliar with that phrasing. But, um, yeah. okay. Well, I appreciate you sitting down. Do you have any uh, message for Idahoans uh, as we wrap up the session? And I say keep up the good work because the people of Idaho are paying attention. They're fed up with politics as usual, here, even here in Idaho. And we, your voice is making a difference. So... Uh, continue to reach out and touch, you know, communicate with your elected officials, and uh, speak up because you are you are making a difference. And I appreciate the people of Idaho feeling like they're they're they've got s some important things to address and and they're being listened to. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And get that gun bill. 
get that small arm protection act put into law to protect us from the radical gun grabbers in Washington, D.C. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it.